my loves! Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello, my name is Loe, and lately my TikTok for you page has gotten a little too predictable. Every day I scroll through that godforsaken app, I see the exact same thing over and over and over again. Edits of a Starian from Baldur's Gate 3, self-explanatory. Cute dog videos and Susie Pesto Storytime stitches, which is what we are talking about in today's video. If you're not familiar with this trend, essentially an influencer named Susie was making a video just cooking one night talking about how you can call her crazy, but she's not a fan of store-bought pesto. So people have been stitching Susie's pesto video and saying, wow, store-bought pesto, you are crazy, Susie. But here's a story of something absolutely absolutely crazy that happened to me. Basically the joke is that they'll say something completely unhinged, you will not know where these story times are going, and at the end they're like, but store-bought pesto, wow, you're nuts! And I love the trend because I love listening to people just tell stories about their lives, especially crazy ones, but especially, especially scary ones. And you know that if there is a scary side to absolutely any TikTok trend, your girl will find it. I'm so excited to say that the trend does include scary stories. So today I've rounded up five of my favorites that have gone viral on TikTok recently, and I'm gonna show them to you guys. You might be wondering like, why five? That's so few. But these stories are all like four to seven minutes long, so there's a lot to get through. This first story is from Sid's Fab Shop, who spent a summer in this old haunted mansion and had quite the story to tell coming out of it. The story starts off with Sid looking for a new place to live after getting a new job in a new city. She's going through different accommodation options and she's scrolling through the internet, and on Craigslist she sees an ad for a room that's only a hundred dollars a month in this beautiful, huge mansion. Now, $100, even back when Sid was looking around for a place to stay, was unheard of, so cheap. So what's the catch? Basically, it's this historic building that usually there are tons of people living in at all times, but they had no one to stay there over the summer. So they offered rent dirt cheap if you would just come and live in this house. So for a whole summer, Sid is just gallivanting around this beautiful mansion, and she's like, the the only person living there. Well, not exactly. She has one roommate, and this is a guy named Tim. She and Tim don't really communicate the best, kind of didn't hit things off on the right foot, doesn't seem like she even really saw him that much around the house, so it basically was like she was living here alone. However, Tim goes out of town, truly leaving the house all to Sid. Now, this is this old, creepy, haunted mansion, right? She doesn't really want to be there alone, but she's making the best of it. However, weird things started happening in the house as soon as she was alone. I won't lie, I was scared to be in this house alone for a week, but I don't want to be scared, so I just decided this is an exercise in self-confidence. I strut around the house like I own the place. If something's scary, I eliminate it. For instance, on the ground floor, there are these five doors in a row down this dark hallway, and the doors were always kind of cracked open, and they led to the bedrooms that nobody is staying in for the summer, so it was creepy, and in my imagination, go crazy. So, to take control of the situation, I simply pull all the doors shut. I was scared to come home to a dark house, so when I leave for the day, I left all the lights on strategically, so that when I came in through the door, I would have a lit path all the way up to my room. So anyway, I'm proceeding through this week with delusional confidence and I'm starting to notice some things. For instance, all those heavy doors I closed, that some of them are cracked open a little bit, which is objectively creepy, but I don't let myself think that it's creepy because remember, this is an exercise in self-confidence. I pull the doors shut and figure that it's an old house. The doors must have just gone open on their own. I notice some nights when I come home, some of the lights that I swear I kept on, off weirdest thing of all, I was having a string cheese moment in my life where I was eating absurd amounts of string cheese. I started noticing throughout the week that my string cheese stash was dwindling. So these weird things are happening around the house. Sid is finding her string cheese supply is dwindling, doors open on their own, lights that she knows she left on are turned off, but she keeps moving through the week with blind delusional confidence. From her own mouth, of course. She says that she one night 
just decides like enough is enough. I'm not gonna be freaked out like this. I'm gonna go get my string cheese. I'm gonna sing in the shower. I'm going to just exist in this empty home and know I'm the only person there. As she curls up in bed to read a book and hopefully fall asleep, she hears something so distinct she can't ignore it anymore. I'm reading my book and that's when I hear a door shut downstairs and then I hear another door shut downstairs. At this point, it's starting to feel real. I think there's somebody in the house with me. My doors don't have locks, so I take my dresser and I push it up against my bedroom door. The dresser isn't that heavy, so I take my bed and shove it in front of my dresser. That's when I hear footfalls. There's no f way these can't be real, like these can't be human footfalls. An animal probably got in the house until I hear them start coming up the stairs. Approach, they are slowly approaching. I crawl underneath my bed. I look underneath the dresser that I've pushed in front of the door. There's a crack under my door about this big. And as I hear the footfalls get to the top of the stairs and walk onto the landing, I see two human feet stop right in front of my door. I am seeing the shoes of a man. He departs slowly down the stairs, eat the light, of the stairway flip off as he's walking down the stairs. And Susie, I cannot explain to you why I did what I did next. I went to sleep. Sun's out, it's Saturday morning. What a silly drunk little girl I was last night thinking that somebody was in the house. Moving my dresser, moving my bed, like how over the top could I be? Of course nobody is in the house. It's Saturday, it's the summer, I'm 21. I'm gonna go read my book out in the kiddie pool cause nothing's wrong. The stairs are switchbacked so they go like down there's a mini landing and then down again. You can't see the bottom of the stairs from the top. This So I stomp down the first half of the stairs, swinging myself around on the banister, and then I freeze. There is a man at the bottom of the stairs just staring up at me. He is disheveled. He is not well. And he is terrified. We both literally lose our sh And to cut to the point, remember my roommate Tim who did not communicate very well with me? Right. Well, Tim's cousin was coming in town that week. Tim, being out of town, told his cousin, sure, stay. So we have 10 empty bedrooms. Tim neglects to tell me that he's letting his cousin have our house for the week. Tim also neglects to tell his cousin that another person lives in this house. So, not a ghost, not an intruder, either. Actually, just a fellow guest of this home that had never been made aware of Sid's presence, nor she of his. How do you live with a roommate and not tell them you have a guest coming over, let alone a guest coming over that is going to be there while you're out of town. I cannot imagine how freaked out both of these people were to see each other that morning. Me and Tim's cousin have been living in the same haunted mansion on different schedules. I was shutting all the doors. He was coming home and freaking out and cracking the doors back open. I was leaving all the lights on. He would swear that he was turning them off. He did like eat her string cheese though, but he probably thought it was Tim's because he probably didn't think anyone else was living there. I don't know. That is one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. So I thought it was a good one to kick off this video with. The next story is from Yo Adrian 34 and this one it takes so many twists and turns, I promise you'll never know where it's going once. One night, Adrian's friend invites her out to the club. They had a reason to celebrate, they wanted to go out and enjoy themselves. But as they were leaving the club, Adrian noticed that her friend's trunk, the trunk of her car, was wide open. And Adrian was like, oh my god, my purse was in that trunk. And sure enough, somebody had broken into her friend's car while they were in the club and stolen her bag. So her purse is gone, her ID is gone, but what is she gonna do? She just goes back to her normal life. The next day, she's just hanging out in her house where she lives with a few roommates, when suddenly she hears this huge bang. Adrian runs out of her room, all of her roommates run out of their rooms, they all go downstairs to find that a man has crashed into Adrian's car in their driveway. He fell asleep behind the wheel and totaled her car while it was parked in the driveway of her home. Brutal. So Adrian's just not having a great week, to say the very least. Her car was totaled, her ID, her purse is gone, and she's 
very obviously kind of feeling down in the dumps about all of this. That's when her friends come to her and they're like, nope, 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 we're gonna go out, we're gonna mourn the loss of your car, like, we are going to go forget all of this is happening for a couple of hours. And Adrian's like, you know what? Fine, fine, let's go. So she goes out that night, she has a really, really, really good time, such a good time that she was feeling a little hungover the next day and decided to sleep in. And she was the only person home when suddenly a lot of noise started being made downstairs. I'm in my bed and all of a sudden my roommate's dogs just start barking. I'm sitting in my bed and I'm listening. I hear cabinet doors in the kitchen opening and closing, opening and closing. That didn't really alarm me because my roommates come home a lot during the day um, just to stop in, to get a snack, to eat lunch. So I wasn't too alarmed. So then I looked outside my window and I was like, there's no cars in the driveway. So who's here? So I walk out of my room and I can see over the balcony downstairs. And as I look over the balcony downstairs, I see two men standing by the pool table. So I slowly backed into my room, quietly closed the door, locked it, and tried to figure out what my next move was gonna be. Grabbed my phone, got in the closet, called 911. I'm on the phone with the 911 dispatcher and she's just asking me all kinds of questions. I give her all the general information and then she's just going on like, um, what room are you in? What color are the shutters on your house? Yada, 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 yada. All of a sudden I hear the guys coming up the stairs. So I can hear them in my roommate's bedroom, just tearing stuff up, going through everything. Then I hear them coming towards my room. They get to my room, they're trying the handle and it's locked. So they move on to the next room. At this point, it's pretty clear to me that the police are not gonna get there before these guys find me and I'm freaking out. They try the door again, it's locked. So then they just kick the door in. So I'm sitting there in complete silence, trying not to freak out. They're going through my room. The guy goes to open the closet door. As he's opening the closet door, he's also peeking out the window, I think just to make sure no one's coming. So then he looks down at me and I just say, please don't hurt me. And then I hang up the phone. I don't know why I hung up. I could not think. I was shocked. I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. So he looks at his friend and I think they both realized that I had been in the house the entire time. So they don't say a word to each other. They walk out of the room and close the door behind them. At this point, I'm listening and listening and listening, trying to see if they're leaving, if they're going downstairs to grab a knife, a bat, I don't know. And as I'm listening, my phone's ringing and I realize it's 911 calling me back. So I pick up the phone and I'm literally shaking like this. And I'm like, hello? And I'm still listening and listening and listening. And the 911 lady, she's like, hey, don't hang up, leave the line open. If you need to put the phone down, that's fine. Don't hang up, don't hang up. And I'm still just listening and I'm shaking and I'm looking out the window because I'm trying to see if I see them run out of the house. And finally, as I'm looking out the window, I see a police car come up. I cannot even imagine going through what Adrian did. And even as she was telling this story and I was listening to it for the first time, I was like, you are maybe the strongest person I have ever seen in my life. Because how do you get through a week like that? How do you get through having your purse stolen, immediately having your car totaled, and then your house broken into, all within the span of a couple of days. Thank God, of course, she was okay. They didn't injure her, didn't hurt her in any way, and she was totally fine, but they never caught the guys who did it. Never caught the guys who did it. And she's pretty sure that they were the same ones who broke into her friend's car, stole her purse, had her ID, knew her address, and then probably spent days scoping out the place, trying to get, you know, everyone's routines and schedules kind of familiarized so that they could break into Adrian's house. And they thought that everybody was gone on the day that they broke in, but that was only because Adrian's car had been totaled, so it wasn't in the driveway anymore. The craziest 10 days of my life. But I'm with you, Susie. Store-bought pesto. The next TikTok comes from Gracie, but she spells her name Grassy. Um, I'll have her TikTok, of course, like linked down below, but I'll be calling her Gracie for this video. Not Grassy, because I 
I feel like that would just be disrespectful. Now, Gracie's video is actually what kicked off my obsession with these Susie Pesto stitches in the first place, and hers is also the first paranormal story we have of this video. In her sophomore year of high school, Gracie started feeling really unsettled at night. She constantly felt like she was being watched by something. She never felt safe in her room, never felt like she was truly alone, to the point where she says that she felt like she was having like a mental break. She was so paranoid at night and she tried everything she could think of. She hung up blackout curtains, she tried to just get herself to go to sleep, but every single night she was staying up until the sun rose, just petrified of something that she couldn't quite put her finger on. One night, Gracie films a little room tour for the guy that she's talking to. He sent her his room tour, she's sending him back one. And in the video that she took in her bedroom, she spotted something that would make her blood run cold. So I send one back, like a little video of my room, I'm like laying in bed. Um, I watch the video back and there's indeed something watching me. Not a person, so I can show the video if you guys want. But um, literally caught a face in my mirror, like staring at me. It was like I saw it and my heart dropped and I was like, yep, that's it. Um, people who have like experienced like paranormal stuff, you know the feeling I'm talking about. Anyways, so the next day I'm hanging out with my aunt and I like tell her what's going on. I like show her the video and she's like, um, I need to take you to my mom. So her mom is like super like spiritual, is able to like see, um, she's had like a lot of experiences like seeing demons or like ghosts or like dead relatives and stuff. So she's like, let's take this to my mom. I show her mom the video without saying a single word. She looks up to, she looks up at me and says, um, you need to pray tonight and put a, and put a Bible by your door. So I was like, oh, okay. So that night I like pray and everything and then it's done. I don't feel like that ever again. Um, every single person I've ever told the story to and then followed up by showing the video has literally gotten goosebumps and a few times a few people I've showed the video to have cried when I've showed them. So if you guys want to see the video, let me know. You might be wondering what she saw in the mirror exactly. Like, what did it look like? Did she ever show the video? And she did. In a follow-up TikTok, Gracie showed exactly what that face looked like. <laughs> Okay, here's a little close up. Obviously, you can see like the cheek right there, the eye, the nose, the mouth, and then like the body. So, obviously, when I watched that video back, I thought it might have been a glare because my phone flash like was on while recording the video, but there was no glare in any of my other mirrors, like at all. There was nothing that it could have reflected off of or any type of shadow to make it look like that detail of a face. Like, you can't tell me that you didn't see a face. Honestly, if someone were to show me that video without any backstory whatsoever, I might look at the face and be like, I mean, that is creepy, but it could just be a trick of the light, could just be a glare. Like, there's so many explanations for a, a unfamiliar thing, I guess, like in the reflection of your mirror. Plus our brain does this really cool thing where we like to see something familiar in objects or in things that just don't make sense. Like if you've ever looked in the corner of your room at night and thought you saw someone standing there only to turn on the lights and realize it was just like a heap of clothes in a chair, that's because your brain is literally filling in the blanks because you're seeing something in the dark that you don't quite understand and you're imagining what it could be. So if I just seen the video, maybe I wouldn't be like that creeped out by this one. But <laughs> with the backstory and knowing that Gracie had been so freaked out for so long when she finally saw that face in the mirror and then the fact that she never felt like that again after following her aunt's mom's kind of um, advice and praying and doing all of the stuff that she was recommended and the haunting just like goes away. Like I actually think this is one of the scariest ones that we're going to talk about today. 
because the backstory to the actual footage is so freaking creepy. The next video is from Light Siren Action. Our poster works as a paramedic, and on this day in this story, she had been called to the home of a 45-year-old woman who had started experiencing seizures. However, when she and her fellow paramedics get there, law enforcement is acting kind of weird about this. They're a little jumpy. They're basically saying, hey, if you don't need this, we're gonna leave, like, we're gonna go. And she just gets a weird feeling. So she tells them, no, 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 you, you stick around. I have a strange feeling about this one. And I don't think she could have known what she was about to walk into, but my God, was it unsettling to say the least. And when my partners and I walked into the living room of this home, there was a patient laying on the floor and her body was contorted into a way that was just simply not human. Standing next to this patient dressed in a full suit and tie at midnight or 1 a.m. in the morning was her husband, and he told me in Spanish that his wife had began seizing when they were laying in bed watching TV, and at the time I didn't put all of the clues together, I just thought that it was a bit strange he was wearing a full suit and tie. I didn't think about the fact that she wasn't in her bed where he said that the seizing began, but the patient was still laying on the floor so I told the patient's husband that I would evaluate her and see if she wanted to go to the hospital and he said it doesn't matter what she wants she has to go to the hospital I thought that was a bit strange so I said okay I crouched down and I wanted to ask the patient questions when I crouched down she turned and contorted her body towards me in another position that did not look human and began to growl. This is around the time that our poster really started to take note of the room around her. She noticed that the furniture had been pushed up against the walls, that there was a Bible on the floor next to the patient having seizures, that the husband was in a full suit and tie. At this point, the poster knows that she has walked into an exorcism, or at least the aftershocks of an exorcism, and clearly one that did not go particularly well. So throughout our interaction, the patient is growling, hissing, at one point becomes combative. So I asked one of my partners to go get the box that holds the controlled substances so that we could sedate this patient. And while my partner goes to do that, I'm sitting by the patient and she begins to chant. Yes, I said chant. And I don't recognize the language that she is chanting in. I speak English and Spanish and it is neither one of those. So I ask her husband who also speaks Spanish in Spanish, what is she speaking? And he said, I think Italian. And I said, does she speak Italian? And he said, no. And I said, why would she speak Italian then? And he said, I don't know. And I didn't know either. And I'm pretty sure she was chanting in Latin. So we end up sedating this patient and no one wanted to help us get this patient onto the gurney because I mean, we actually didn't even wanna to touch this patient either so I didn't blame them at all. And then we go en route to the hospital and while en route, the patient is unconscious, um, but I kept feeling like she could wake up at any moment. And for obvious reasons, we didn't wanna sit next to this patient so we were standing behind her monitoring her and I told my partner, I'm really sorry if you've lost all respect for me because I don't wanna sit next to her. And she said, what are you talking about? I don't wanna sit next to her either. And and she said, oh my gosh, Stacy, don't look, and to which I looked. And when I looked at my patient, she had placed her fingers on top of her head like this and was looking at us and going like that. This entire experience sounds like a nightmare. When the patient was chanting, apparently she was chanting in a mixture of like Spanish and a language that the poster couldn't understand. She also talked to the poster about wanting to take her children to a bloody river. And the thing with her hand and the, oh my God, I can't even do it. Like just truly, truly the stuff nightmares are made of. As the patient chanted, she went in between a language that I didn't know and Spanish. And she talked about taking her children to a bloody river. And I've never been so happy to arrive at the hospital and drop a patient off. And we went back to the station and I slept with the lights on all night long and yeah, that's really crazy about the pesto, Susie. I crazy. I totally think that this poster walked into exactly what she thinks she walked into. I literally think this was an exorcism gone bad. 
and then of course law enforcement was called and paramedics were called and I have no idea whatever happened to that woman but I hope that it was all resolved and nobody else got scarred from this situation like our poster did but my god what an incredible story our last TikTok is a banger and it comes from Leandro or YL Viegas underscore on TikTok I don't know if I said that correctly, but I will have it of course linked down below. Go check him out. He's been telling other stories like this, all of which are like equally creepy, but this one in particular, this Susie Pesto stitch really crawled under my skin. Leandro grew up in Colombia and he says that during his childhood, he had an experience where he was kidnapped by what he referred to as a duende, or an elf. Now, I wasn't super familiar with them before this video. They're from Latin American folklore, of course, and the Wikipedia page for them says that they can be kind of correlated to like gnomes or dwarves, or at least how I feel like we see those in other parts of the world. Specifically, Duende, though, lure children into the forest, which is where this story takes place. Leandro was spending some time at his uncle slash family friend's house in the forest, when some of the other kids staying there asked if he wanted to play hide and seek. And it was me and a bunch of other kids. Mind you, I was one of the youngest ones. So we were playing this game called Escondite, which is like hide and seek. Yeah, it's hide and seek. And they told us multiple times to not go so deep into the woods because um, nobody was paying attention to us and everybody was just busy cooking. So they, they didn't want us to get lost. Now, we were also sharing the house with people who I have never seen before, but they were my parents and also like my uncles and aunties friends. So like people who maybe I didn't hang out with, but my family did and they brought their kids. When we were playing hide and seek, we went to the woods because we just didn't want to get found, I guess. And I separated from two other kids and it went deeper and deeper. Why? I don't know. I was a stubborn kid. I, I wanted to win the game, okay? So when I went into the woods, I thought that I was going with someone else. Like, I thought someone was behind me. Like, another kid was behind me. So like, oh yeah, like, he's behind me, he's behind me, he's behind me, whatever. And then, a new kid appeared. But I was like, hmm. At the moment, I thought it was the same kid, but I was like, you look different. Like, did you do something to your hair? And he goes like, no. We kept walking, we got deep into the woods, and we just decided to stop because he was like way too into the woods, like 15, 20 minutes away from the house. And then we decided to sit right by the river. And I'm not gonna lie, like my memory was a little foggy, but I just remember that we were just like seated by the river talking and he taught me a lot of bad words. I remember that. And I don't know, we just like kept dancing and just talking and talking and talking. But like, I never saw like the day got, i never saw that it got darker like i never saw the stars or the moon or nothing like i always just saw the sun like the whole time i thought it was like the afternoon now i knew the setup for the story i knew the story was coming but hearing leandro say that he never saw like a day night cycle my heart dropped into my stomach because i was like oh no this kid with him is the duende. Like the kidnapping is not coming. It has already happened and it gets so much worse. Then after a while, I was like, hmm, it's been a couple of hours. Like maybe I should go and check because I feel like they got tired of us and they didn't look for us. And I said, listen, I gotta go. I gotta go and check because like, it's been a couple of hours, I'm hungry. And he got so mad and his face like totally turned. It was a child face and then it turned like an old man face. It was insane. It was insane. I was like, holy. And then I saw his feet and his feet were like facing the other way. Like, like looking that way. Like as if my fingers were pointing that way. And he was standing right here. I was like, holy. F I was a kid. I didn't know how to react. And I said, I'm gonna go. And I ran so fast. When I got back to the place, um, I realized that it was a little bit chillier. It was like, Hmm, it's in the morning, like, it's weird. And it was also a little bit foggy. So I was like, that's weird. And then I knocked at the door and nobody was, I mean, nobody was outside of the house because like, we cooked outside and everything. I was like, where's everybody? Like, where's the music? Where's everybody? And then I knock at the door 
and my family is waiting for me and they were crying they were like oh my god you're here you're finally here i was like i left for like three hours what, what happened and they go and they go you left on friday it's monday three days and i thought it was I'm, i thought i was out for like maybe three hours mind you mind you i never saw that it got darker i never saw the stars i never saw the moon nothing like it was always sunny right and i was like th that makes no sense the police was called everybody was involved like everybody went into the woods and they never found me like they they said that they screamed my name so many times and it's where i never i never heard anything leandro's parents have been looking for him for days days he had been missing for days an entire weekend thank god he was okay and he said at the end of this video that this duende or whatever that thing was like hunted him down in the city when they eventually moved and kept visiting his home in the city somehow followed him out there but that apparently that's a different story for a different time um thank you i don't think i could handle more terror right now that entire weekend in the forest though his family was screaming his name calling for him law enforcement was involved they searched everywhere and they could not find him and he never heard them calling for him either he says he's thankful that he was found and he came back because there are a lot of stories of kids who don't come back but yeah i wanted to end off with that one because it will give you nightmares if none of the others have yet. There you guys have it. Those were five absolutely terrifying TikTok stories from the scary side of TikTok. And I knew that even though there was just five TikToks that this was gonna be a long video. So I didn't even include all of the other TikToks I found for this. So let me know if you want a part two. I can absolutely do one. I already have the TikToks pulled and they're scary, crazy stories. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this one down below. But that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. A special thank you to my subscribers who are members of the channel. If you want to join the channel memberships and get members only perks like members only videos and other cool stuff, you can click the little join button somewhere around the screen, probably next to the subscribe button. We would love to have you. A special thank you to my VIP loves for their continued and generous support of the channel. I love and appreciate you guys very, very much. I love you all very much and I will see you in my next video. Bye!